really going to you know talk so much about um, how we do HDOs etc because I think that's that's uh, something that is now you know a lot of people are already doing but I'm going to talk more about the uh, evidence okay especially for uh, the younger guys how many of you all have seen a HDO during training oh quite a lot not bad how many of you all have seen more than a 10 year outcome for a good outcome for an HDO not so many right so there's many of you who may not be convinced that an HDO works uh, for a long time and for a 55 year old with a 10 degree varus <laughs> and a grade 3 Kelgen Lawrence which means essentially uh, coming close to bone on bone grade 4 is bone on bone and grade 3 is significant how many of you all think that this patient can be treated by a high tibial osteotomy okay again some convincing needs to be done so most of you all think that it may not work so I'm going to use this terminology kind of uh, uh, interchangeably, a high tibial osteotomy, distal femur osteotomy, HTO and DFO and a TCBO. So is a unicondyler okay for a grade three? This is a paper by Chris Dodd, who is one of the fathers of, of the Oxford knee. And they looked at the patients who had a revision of a unicondyler. <laughs> and in that, they found that 30% of the cases who had a unicondyler, the primary procedure was done inappropriately. So that is something that you have to guard against. Don't do a unicondyler where it is not indicated. That is only on bone on bone. Is a unicondyler better than a high tibial osteotomy? <laughs> so that what you saw, bone on bone, is what these guys call a kissing lesion, okay? Where the femur and tibia were in contact in a 45 degree uh, flexion. So here, the uh, HTOs group had a significantly higher BMI, but if you look at all of the LISOM score, the VAS score, the uh, HSS score, and the WOMAX score, only at six months was there any significant difference. At the end of the follow-up, one year onwards, there was no significant difference in all of these uh, patients. So the high tibial osteotomy was comparable to a unicondyler in terms of clinical outcomes. What about physical activity? What allows you a better physical activity? So these guys looked at return to physical activity. Patients who underwent a high tibial osteotomy were more physically active pre and post-op. There was a bigger improvement in the unicondylar because the unicondylar started at a lower, um, at a lower position. Another paper which looks at the uh, same thing. So even in advanced ages, and this is our personal experience also, a unicondylar uh, uh, HTO is safe and effective with moderate medial uh, osteoarthritis. And therefore, as one of the treatments for uh, osteoarthritis, it is reasonable to consider a high tibial osteotomy which takes away um, less bone because ultimately as I will show you uh, a revision of a uni is a revision uh, whereas when you do a TKR in an HTO it's not a revision so if you do a high tibial osteotomy or a uni what happens when you do the uh, knee replacement that is conversion TKA after previous HTO in comparison to conversion TKA after a unicondylar is there a difference in their survival. So, young age and severe uh, virus were associated with dissatisfaction. So, the chance of a TKA conversion is about twice compared to a high tibial osteotomy. And of course, in our situation, you also have to think about what are the costs involved in an arthroplasty, whether it's a uni or a revision, right? So again, UKA or HTO, how much time do they last if you take conversion to uh, TKR as the end point? So here in this paper, the amount of revisions after a UK was almost twice 
that of a high tibial osteotomy and this was this was from a uh, registry uh, patient so you have to th think about whether a unicondyler is appropriate in terms of the cost experience and infrastructure again if we look at that survival there is a reduced survival of the tkr which is done after unicondyler compared to a tkr which is done after a high tibial osteotomy so this corresponded to a significantly inferior survival of total knee arthroplasty following uk and this is what i meant that when you do a, a, a tkr after a unicondyler it is always a revision whereas in hto to tkr it is a conversion right so and twice it's not not a you know 1.4 or 1.2 it's it's two times the revision rates in terms of a unicondyler so therefore a uh, unicondyler should be considered more as a, a, a option versus a total knee all of you all i'm sure have assisted or done total knees where the medial condyle is completely worn and the lateral condyle is pristine right these are patients where, who are getting a total knee uh, today these are probably the patients who should be getting a uni right in in older ages but if you have a 45 and a 55 year old with the medial condyle worn and the lateral cartilage pristine that patient should probably be looking at a high tibial osteotomy rather than a uni right again revision after high tibial osteotomy and a unicondyler the revision rate of tka this is multiple papers i'm showing you was higher after uh, than that after tka following an hto and revision implants were required not primary implants when you revise an hto the way it is done today not the closing wedge which coventry talked about if you are doing a medial opening wedge today you are not altering the anatomy and therefore you can get away with a primary tk whereas when you do it after a unicondyler which fails with a significant amount of bone lysis etc you may need revision uh, implants and the other thing to note is in all of them Uh, there was no significant differences in range of motion post operative complications or post operative uh, infection rates in all of the tkrs that is whether you do it following a tk uh, hto or following a uni so the real debate that one should be thinking of is a unicondyler versus total knee arthroplasty in the older uh, patient where older patients with mainly medial osteoarthritis they should have a uni rather than a total various forms of realignment um, when you should consider in younger patients and by that definition in orthopedic terms uh, 60 years i think is is young active patients patients with a more sort of rural uh, background without the comforts of uh, urban life and patients who have mainly medial compartment osteoarthritis so we have a workshop in the afternoon so if you are interested to know more you are welcome to the workshop thank you